All right, so this will be another video about optimization in Godot 4. There were some helpful suggestions in the comments section, so I'm going to implement some of their solutions. The first is that I will turn off vSync. To do this, you open Project Settings menu, navigate to the Display section, and find Window Options. Here you will find a vSync mode setting with a drop-down selection. To disable vSync, choose Disabled. I found this Reddit link which helped me understand what vSync is, but I'll give an explanation here as well. vSync apparently, when enabled, locks your FPS to the refresh rate of your monitor. For my setup, this means 60 FPS. Uh, I believe you can change this within Godot. With vSync enabled, this also means your physics process and your idle process will stay in sync. Keep in mind, this is of course according to people with anime avatars on the internet. Sadly, the source of most of my programming knowledge. With all that said, I'm going to turn vSync off, which will mean the engine will render its max rate all the time. Another person pointed out that if we wanted to test just how many models we can spawn, then we shouldn't attach any logic and just create the models in the scene. This is a good idea, and it led me to make this new test scene. So, in this case, the models have no movement or animations, not even scripts. They're just meshes. They are created by code with a multi-mesh instance node, in simple terms, this multi-mesh node uh, allows us to create several mesh instances with a single multi-mesh node. To further illustrate what I mean, I'm going to remove everything from this that is not the mesh. So we'll make this local so I can edit it. I'm going to take the mesh and move it to the node 3D. We'll delete the uh, mutant optimized holder. So now we have just the mesh. And what I can do to use this as a uh, multi-mesh instance is um, come over here. We're gonna say make unique. We're gonna go down here and say save. And I like to name this as mesh. And then we'll name this as optimized mutant and anyway. So we save that and then if we go to our multi-mesh scene, uh, we can see here that we have our multi-mesh instance. We click on this and we can actually select what we want there. So I'm going to go to quick load and you can see we have our optimized mesh there or our de-optimized mesh there that I've already made. So we'll click on that and there that's how we can change which mesh we're spawning. They again have no logic, they're just meshes. In theory, this should help us display the models more efficiently. There was some contention between the intelligentsia on the efficiency of a multi-mesh versus a regular mesh node. So I phoned a man with divine intellect to gain some perspective. You seem to be in denial. Why don't you fucking download my two meg? You can download my two meg distribution that has all the source code on it, and you can compile with my fucking compiler. You're a Negotiations broke down from there, and I don't think we reached a workable conclusion. I'm going to present the test now, and we will discuss some of the deceptive things about the performance that threw me for a loop. So, first to explain our setup, we have the AMD Performance Monitor to our bottom right, we have our Windows Resource Monitor to our top right, and our Godot Statistics to our left. The only one that really provides much insight on our left is the frame rate to the top left, and the number at the bottom left is the amount of models in the scene. On our AMD performance monitor, we're just looking at how much of the GPU is being utilized, as well as the CPU and some of the memory. And with the Windows resource monitor, we can monitor how much of our memory is being used as well. They should match up pretty well. With one model, we can see that the amount of objects in the scene didn't change. I think that's because the multi-mesh is counted as only one node. The number changes when the mouse is moved though, so it can look deceiving. You have to steady the mouse for a true count. As for the draw calls, they stay at 9 no matter how many models we spawn. We have exactly 9 materials for our model, leaving me to believe that the draw calls are mainly influenced by the amount of materials. The working set of our resource monitor grows a few thousand kilobytes, but not as much as when we were creating full units like in the last video. Whatever number we place in the spin box is squared and that many models are created in a grid. We place the 5 in and receive 25 models. With all the models on screen, our FPS is about 300 compared to the earlier 1500 FPS we were getting with one model. 
We create a grid of 100 models, which brings our FPS rate down to 98. Our working set for Windows Resource Monitor is still growing, but still nowhere near as fast as the full unit spawning test we did last video. Our GPU is at 100% utilization and probably not going to get a break anytime soon. We throw 400 units up on the screen, slowing us to 37 frames per second. Draw calls remain unchanged, as well as object count. I decide to go for broke and see if we can square 100, giving us 10,000 models without crashing. So we can do it, however, our frame rate drops to around 6. It takes me about 6 or 7 more minutes to get all the units on the screen. I'll show a sped up version, then we will move to our optimized version test and see how many of the optimized model we can get on the screen. We can also see the models aren't rendering well or completely. There is probably just too much to render and my GPU can't keep up. Here's the sped up video, it's moving at about 3 FPS for me. I can look up to the sky to not render the models and that will make it increase to around 200 FPS, but it goes away pretty quickly as soon as I look back down. Alright, so now we are back with our optimized model that we have here. And uh, you see our draw calls are down to one, I think because we only have the one material. So let's do five, that squares it and makes 25 of them. Um, we can see pretty much no problem. Um, that should be really easy for it. So then we'll do 10, that should make 100. And you can see we've lost some, uh, lost a little bit of FPS, but not really that much. Uh, the draw calls are still the same draw calls. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll do, I think we did 40 and that makes uh, 1600. So now we're around 58, 57, 58, yeah, frames per second. I'm going to try and get them all on frame. I'll probably have to go up and rotate just a little bit. You can see we've got a good amount here and the models are still coming in uh, good. So we'll go ahead and step that up. Um, I guess why don't we just go ahead and do 100 and see what happens. So now we have 10,000. 14 frames a second. Um, let's go down and look at the models. So on the other one, we had a bunch of signs of stuff not showing up right. And this one, everything seems to be showing up okay. But again, we're only getting about 14 frames per second. So if 100 is too many, how many can we do to keep it around 60? Uh, so 45. Add units. 2025. 20, so yeah, really, I'm going to say, let's go 35. Let's see if that keeps a, a consistent. 75. Um... 39 add units I'm looking for 60 yeah right around 60 an easy 60 you know what I mean um, <clears throat> yeah so right there I think is we have it uh, if you want to stay at 60 frames we can have 1521 models so 39 squared I think that is the amount that the screen will allow for 60 FPS um, I guess we probably could do more uh, but you know, it's all gonna look bad. So there are a few differences between our models. One is the amount of vertices and another is the amount of materials on the model. I want to see if the material amount or the vertex count is more impactful on performance. Okay, so what I've done, you can see here, this is our de-optimized model. And I have taken all of these materials and I only use the one that we used on the hands and I put that as the material for everything. So this guy only has one material instead of the nine that are on here. Is that nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, nine. Just so there's no confusion, I'll explain my methods. We will be spawning the single material de-optimized mesh in the same grid we had before and recording the FPS at different amounts of the model spawned. 
I then repeated this with the regular deoptimized model that we're familiar with with the nine materials. The results are in the charts to the left. I mean the right. I got the opposite result of what I thought would happen. Shouldn't the single material outperform the nine materials in FPS rate? The draw calls are lessened in the single material, but still the FPS is higher. Why? My hypothesis is that not all materials are created equal. Each material is different and contains different data. Some materials have more data and some have less. Think about UV textures and large diffuse textures being used in a material. Rendering these textures will take more resources than rendering a single color for the whole mesh and applying no texture map at all. I wanted to test more, so I did the same test with the optimized model. I'll play the testing in the background and display the results in the graph. There were three phases of testing that were undertaken this time. I wanted to test more about materials, so I had our regular optimized model as our baseline. I added a second material to the pants of the model, and these were our test subjects. One pants material was just a purple albedo color. The other pants material had a large texture and UV map data. We grid spawn again and see the results to the right. The data makes me feel at least a little more comfortable about my understanding. The textured material is negatively affecting the frame rate when compared to the baseline model material. The purple texture was marginally better than the single model for under 400. After 400 units, then they are pretty identical performance wise. The video is getting long and I plan to do more testing on different aspects. I think the only way to truly test optimization and explore it is to build a horribly optimized game and then fix it. I'm kicking around the idea of creating a shitty COD Zombies clone with the assets I have here for that very purpose. More videos will be coming on this channel, thanks for watching this one, stay tuned for more.